Hello. This time I would like to present an activity that introduces students to ciphers and their basic characteristics. For this activity, we need two teams of students, CIA and hackers. Both teams should have between two and four members. CIA's goal is to create an unbreakable cipher and hackers must break it. Now, it is quite difficult to break a cipher just by listening to encrypted communication. Therefore, we need to give hackers some advantage. So the game goes like this. The CIA will create a cipher that can encrypt any English word and send it verbally with no visual signals. The hackers will come up with a list of 10 English words. Then CIA chooses one spy that will encrypt and send the message. The spy gets the hacker's list and secretly chooses one word and marks it. Then the spy encrypts the word and using only verbal signals sends the encrypted word to the rest of CIA. Of course, the hackers are listening. CIA cannot give the spy any feedback. Once the spy is done, CIA starts decrypting the message and hackers need to determine which word the spy sent. Keep in mind that the CIA doesn't know the list so the decipher really needs to be able to transfer any word. The hackers win if they are able to determine which word the spy sent or they win if the CIA is not able to decrypt the word correctly. CIA wins only if they decrypt the word and hackers don't know which word was sent. After first try, the teams should switch because then students usually start to discover key features of a good cipher. Let's see a typical process of thought. First, CIA usually comes up with a simple substitution cipher that simply replaces each letter with another one or a number. Sometimes a transposition is used. Both of these approaches open opportunities for the hackers because they preserve the length of the word and the letter structure. For example, Xenology has two O's, the first encryption has two Q's, the next one two A's, and so on. Considering the weaknesses, Hackers can create a list of 10 words that will allow them to recognize any of them even if encrypted. Every word will have different length. We can start with up and it is also useful to use words with repeating letters. So pop, dada, stamp, school, glasses and so on. We can finish the list by a really long word and hope that the spy will not choose that one. Using this knowledge, we can go back to CIA with some advice. Good ciphers should not preserve the length of the message and it should encrypt same letter differently each time. Let's create a simple cipher that meets the criteria. To each letter, we assign a number randomly, starting with one, two, three, and so on. To each letter, we assign three different numbers that will allow the spy to encrypt the same letters differently each time. We also include numbers that has no meaning so that the spy can make the message arbitrary longer. Using this cipher, we will encrypt the word committee from the previous list. Starting with letter C, we have three numbers to choose from. Let's choose 50, then we have O, let's choose 22, then M, we can choose 21, and for the next M, it's important to choose a different one, let's go with 55, and so on. Also, we should include some extra numbers that has no meaning, and we can make this message three numbers longer to make it look like the word successfully that is also on the list. 
this is the encryption committee encrypted as this number sequence. It is also useful to make a decryption table for the CIA that is ordered by numbers instead of letters. Of course, this cipher is not very good modern cipher. It wastes a lot of space, it allows only three different symbols for each letter, and it would be broken easily if used for a longer text. But it illustrates basic features of a good cipher, and that was our goal. I look forward to your comments and suggestions. This is Matt Constructed, thank you for watching. If you don't want to miss the next video, hit that subscribe button.